First of all, introducing our challenger. The enemy of the Lua Corner. He's going to step in and he does it all over. Let's bring on the boo. This is Eternal MMA. Mixed Martial Arts fans, welcome back and thank you for joining me once again on the Eternal Insiders podcast back for 2023. My name's Luke and as always, I'm your host. And just before we get into today's video, I just want to talk a little bit quickly about why we have today's guests on the show. Um, normally after an Eternal MMA card, we usually like to schedule a couple of guests, um, you know, usually in the form of a title winner, uh, maybe in the form of a main event winner, uh, sort of what have you, you know, of course, you know, time allowing to, uh, to have the guests on and to edit things of that nature. Um, for myself, last week, I was actually out of, uh, out of town, interstate, uh, spent a lot of time in Queensland for work, uh, then went to Sydney towards the end of the week for a wedding, back home late last night to Victoria, so a very full week for myself. And the only reason I mention that is because in the lead up to this event for Eternal 75, there wasn't a lot of preparation I sort of had in terms of being able to first uh, have a look at the fighters and then maybe actually get to watch the card in its entirety. While I did get to watch most of the main card in its entirety, um, I had a feeling that if I was going to do the show on the Monday, it was likely going to be only time for one guest. Now, as I said, normally if it was going to be one guest, it's probably going to be a title fight winner, a main event winner. Likely would have been someone in the effect of a Diego, Diego Pereira uh, or Jess Medina. Now, the reason why I say that is because at the conclusion of today's guest fight, I knew right then and there that this was only going to be the person I was going to have on today's show, regardless of whatever the outcomes were going to be for the main event, the co-main event, what have you. And the reason he is here today is because at the end of his fight, and boy, did he finish his fight, the buzz around him was such that we just knew we had to have him on the program, uh, making his professional debut against another opponent, also making his professional debut, finishing his fight in style in the third round via technical submission due to a rear naked choke. The man fighting out of infinite MMA in Ballarat, Victoria. I'm talking, of course, about Harry, the human highlight web. And he's joining me right here, right now. So without further ado, Harry, thanks for joining me on the program. And, uh, how are you feeling a couple of days removed from that big performance, man? Hey, that was quite the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm feeling unreal on top of the world at the moment. You know, I um, just had the biggest win of my career. So, um, yeah, I'm still buzzing. I've barely slept since the fight. So, um, yeah, pretty on top of the world, bro. I don't doubt it, mate. Uh, celebrations, a little bit of pizza last night, I think I saw on the old Instagram. So, just sort of <laughs> letting the hair down, so to speak, and just enjoying yourself for the first time probably a little bit, yeah? Yeah, pizza was on top of the list of cravings. Um, couldn't get one on Saturday night in Gold Coast. And um, yeah, as soon as I got home, I just knew I had to go get one. So that went down a treat. No, fair play, man. Speaking of the Gold Coast, man, did you sort of get to have a little bit of celebrations of the Gold Coast? I know it's not the uh, dizzying bright lights of uh, Ballarat, Victoria, so to speak, but uh, did you let it sort of uh, come to you and make, uh, make the most of what the Gold Coast had to offer you anyway? No, nah, I actually didn't because I had us booked on a pretty early flight in the morning. So um not that I ended up getting much sleep anyway, but um, yeah, I just thought I'd go watch the fight and um, get a good feed and I was pretty wrecked by the end of it. So um, just went back to the hotel and just, just chilled out. No, I understand those sentiments, man. And we will talk a little bit about the fight, but I just want to check something very quickly and uh, it has some relevance just in terms of the nickname, the human highlight. Now, I have to admit, sort of coming into this fight and watching your fight, it was also my first time, my first introduction to you. When it sort of popped up on the screen on my iPad in my hotel room, in a small amount of time, I did have to watch the fight amongst mingling with guests and things like that from the wedding. I sort of thought to myself, here's a human highlight reel. This man to make his professional debut selfishly as a fan. And I know I'm sort of uh, meant to be impartial watching these fights, but I'm thinking selfishly as a fan, I better see some highlights from this kid coming out into this fight. And boy, you didn't disappoint, man. So where did the nickname come from? You lived up to it, but uh, who, was the, who was the person that first coined that for you? Yeah, so that was, that was John, my coach, um, after my first fight, my debut. And... Um, I had a pretty good finish, so it was, that was probably the main highlight. But then um, I went on to try and attempt two backflips, which admittedly I, I butchered both of them. So I don't know if you'd call it much of a highlight, but um, it was entertaining nonetheless. And, um, yeah, it's just stuck then. And most of my fights have um, been pretty pretty exciting. And, um, yeah, it's must-see TV. No, must-see TV you are, man. I mean, we did end up on the UFC Fight Pass app with that highlight finish, which we'll talk about momentarily. But... Just in terms of your assessment of your pro debut, I mean, could have that gone any better for you? I mean, you can start your debut in a lot of ways, right? You can get the wins, you can get the losses, maybe you finish the fight early, but for the fact that you went almost a full three rounds against a very competitive opponent, a very highly touted opponent, but still managed to get the finish before the end of the fight, in your opinion, could have that gone any better for your debut as a professional? 
Actually, no, nah, I'm really happy with how that went. Um, I love a knockout, but I'm happy with the submission and um, the fact that he didn't tap made it, made it a bit more a little gangster. But, um, well, um, I got to show a lot of my game, got to show off a lot of my striking and um, my cardio, my conditioning, my grappling. I got to show off pretty much everything. So, um, and yeah, there was a lot of highlights in there. And I'm, yeah, I've watched it about six times already. So, yeah, I'm wrapped with it. Well, you're about one behind me in terms of watching your back, mate. I have watched that replay quite a few times myself. But in terms of submission, this is your first submission on your record, regardless of being an amateur or professional, yeah? Yeah, it's my first one. Um, although I've been in a lot of fights where I've had opponents trying to take me down, but um, I usually get the TKO and I think just the smaller gloves and, um, yeah, I was able to lock that choke up and, um, yeah, it was good. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about your opponent. Of course, you know, both of you guys were coming in making a professional debut. Very, Both of you very highly touted. But, I mean, when you look at a guy like Oliver Schmidt, who is coming out of, you know, city kickboxing, being coached under Eugene Berriman, we don't have to say too much there in terms of what we know that gym's like and what we know Eugene Berriman's like. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, a little bit of a dawning prospect to face for most people. But, I mean, what can you tell us in terms of that matchup being made when did you first find out about it? And what did you know about Oliver as an opponent coming in? Was there any hesitancy in taking that fight against another guy just as highly touted in Australia's lightweight division or I should say the uh, the Oceanic uh, lightweight division, really? Uh, no, nah, so, yeah, we were offered the fight three weeks ago and um, it was coming off the back of... So I was offered a fight when the show was six weeks out. So I had sort of started preparing for a potential opportunity and um when cam sent us the message saying we've got uh oliver schmidt i haven't actually heard of him before that but um i jumped on youtube and um watched his most recent fight and um my coach john he's he's um gone back and watched a few of his fights and um there was no hesitancy i've been struggling to get matchups as it was so we jumped straight on it and um got back to cam the next day and then we're just waiting for a confirmation and um and we started preparing. So, yeah, obviously he's from from you know one of the best gyms in the world. But I've got a lot of belief in my coach and um, my training. So I was confident going in there that um, that I'd be able to get the job done. And even though it's city kickboxing, um, you know, I'm confident in my own striking. So, um, yeah, I was just I was confident and um, showed that my striking's on the level of you know some of the best fighters out of the best gyms in the world. No, you certainly were on that level and then above some, man. I mean, you know, seeing two young guys like yourself, you know, very highly touted prospects, you know, going against each other. And it's a testament to Eternal's matchmaking, I mean, because you don't really ever sort of see anywhere else that kind of matchmaking in terms of two really decent prospects that are going against each other, let alone early in their career, but making their pro debuts. It was almost unfortunate as a fan to see one of you guys have to lose, but incredible to see one of you guys win, knowing that, you know, both you're going to be just fine going forward in your career, given the level that you're fighting at. Now, the finish that you did have, I mean, showing up on UFC Fight Pass Instagram, as we saw, I think there might have been a bit of a, an error in terms of you being tagged in terms of your proper name. I think you might have said, said something on the Instagram there, but nonetheless, must have been pretty cool seeing uh, that highlight uh, show up on a platform that's got over 1 million followers. Yeah, it was unreal. There was probably some other guy named Harry Webb checking his phone at 2 in the morning being like, why, is my, why am I getting all these followers? You know, I, I didn't actually see it. Was, um, it. was another guy named Harry Webb or something? Was that what it was? And someone's had to go in there and correct? Yeah, yeah. So the, they've got... They've, they've, written keep an eye out for whatever you know whatever the caption was and they've tagged the wrong harry webb so um yeah hopefully someone else didn't get blown up but they actually fixed it up today but i uh, kind of missed the boat on that one but yeah no it was still unreal to see that you know a platform that big sharing my fight and selling my debut no it was incredible man and one of the best things to sort of come out of it i mean you know so many eyeballs on your course ufc fight pass but also getting a lot of plaudits from you know a lot of people a lot of professionals and coaches alike Rod Costa himself, the bantamweight champ for Eternal MMA, he did post about you on Instagram. I did have a little bit of chat with uh, with Rod on the night. Uh, my personal opinion, at times you look like a guy. I said to him that you look like a pro that's had uh, ten fights. This isn't a guy making his professional debut. Uh, Rod himself said that. Uh, he said to me, "You look very slick," and he loved your composure. Uh, quote from Rod: He said, "God, he's good." I mean, that, that's high praise coming from a guy like Rod. And then on the flip side, you know, you got uh, commentary wizard Ben Vickers, who moonlights as a promoter for Eternal MMA. Words heard. He said, admittedly, that he hadn't actually heard of you ahead of your fight, but after the fight, you're now his favorite fighter in the world. I mean, what's it like to you? What does it mean to you to hear praise from some of the guys that in the sport, these are the ones that really matter in terms of where you want to hear the praise from? Yeah, no, nah, it feels really good seeing guys that, you know, like I've been watching, um, 
Rod Costa, you know, your Diego Pereira, um, all those guys at home on um, UFC Fight Pass for the cu- past couple of years. And um, to see them, you know, give me a good rap, it's, um, it's pretty surreal. And then watching the commentary back and all the good things they had to say, um, yeah, it just it was a really good feeling. No, I mean, throwing uh, Blake, uh, Blake's compliment towards uh, you at the end of the fight as well, uh, you know, in the, in the actual ring himself. A uh, bit of a good bloke to boot, I think, was the words from Blake there. High praise from a man as good-looking as Blake. They don't come much better looking than Blake. So uh, that must have been nice to sort of hear there too, yeah? Yeah, of, oh, of course. Uh, is Blake's always good value, a bit of a laugh there. So good on Blake. But um, I just want to talk a little bit about in terms of your lead-up coming into this professional fight as well, of course. You had seven amateur fights leading into this. Was there a plan to sort of have X amount of amateur fights before you made your pro debut? Or was it sort of you got to that seventh fight, realized you're rolling at that time, that's when you made the choice to come in and make your professional debut? No, so towards the end of last year, it kind of started to get a bit hard to get matchups at amateur. Um, obviously, I wanted to have as much experience as I could, but I was sort of at the stage where I was, um, I felt like all my coaches felt like the level, I was at the right level to go professional. And um, we actually did have a professional fight booked for February this year. And that one fell through. So um, we got a late uh, notice at amateur to replace. And um, so I got the one more amateur in, and, but we knew it was definitely professional after that. So that's when we started looking for um, matchups on demolition. And then, yeah, Cam hit us up and that was the opportunity we ended up taking. So, yeah, there wasn't any sort of number. It was just sort of when we felt like the skills were there and um, here we are. So. No, and the skills were definitely there, man. I mean, looked incredible on, you know, the biggest platform and we have in the country, right? UFC fight pass looked incredible. Like I said, you look like a guy that had 10 pro fights, not a guy making his debut. Now, you're training out of infinite MMA under your coach, uh, John Campbell there. I mean, are they the guys to credit with how good you looked in that cage? You look so slick. I mean, the high-low combos, the feints, you know, working the jab, you know, fighting off the switch stance, everything that you sort of had in there. You know, everything looks so clean. Everything looks so slick. Is John the man? That's how we credit there. Is it partly just something you got naturally growing up? <laughs> Like, give us a bit of insight into what makes uh, the human highlight reel uh, so good at this point in his career. Yeah, so John will probably post a video in the next couple of days or whatever of um, clips from Ollie's last fight and then clips from, you know, the stuff we're doing in training leading up to the fight and then the actual application in the fight. So um, John does a lot of film study and he's, he's all over the game planning and that sort of thing. So, but then obviously I have to apply it. So it's a bit of both. It's... um. We have a good synergy b- between the two of us. And, but yeah, you know, it's been years of training and to get to where I'm at, it's not just hasn't happened overnight and just burst onto the scene out of nowhere. But yeah, uh, John, he deserves a lot of credit for the work that he puts in and um, the hours he spends studying and getting me ready for these fights. No, I mean, give yourself a lot of credit too as well, right? I mean, when you started doing karate, I believe, at the age of five, now you're on your black belt first, Dan. A couple of uh, amateur kickboxing fights to record there too. So you've been doing this for a long time, even though just at the end of the tender age of 23. Oh. Sorry, you just cut it out at the end there. I missed that one. Oh, I was just sort of saying, you got to give yourself a lot of credit there, right? I mean, obviously got John as your coach, but I mean, you know, you were practicing karate from the age of five. I think I believe you had your black belt uh, first, Dan. Uh, coming in, you had a couple of amateur kickboxing fights there too. So you've had a lot of experience uh, growing up, even though you're only 23 years of age now. Yeah, so I started karate when I was five and um, did that for about 10 years. And then um, towards the end, I sort of started to get a little bit sick of that and um, went and played footy with my mates. That was a more social thing to do at the time. And then um, got into a little bit of Muay Thai when I was about 15. And then, you know, started watching the UFC, playing the UFC video games. And one of my friends, he was... Um, into MMA and that. So he's like, oh, we should go start training. So that's where it all started. And I wasn't taking it too seriously at the start. I was just sort of doing it for a bit of fun. And then when I turned 18, I was like, you know, I wouldn't mind competing and that sort of thing. So I started to take it seriously, start training every day. And, you know, I put in the hard work. There's like, you know, three hours every night on top of full-time work. And um, yeah, I, I would like to take that up to two days and that sort of thing. But, you know, the hard work's starting to pay off now. Now, the hard work paying off in a big way, man, like we said, like making a professional debut in the way that you did. I think Blake said at the end of the fight, there wasn't too many sort of debuts that he can remember in recent memory where you look so impressive. And, and the way that both of you guys look, to be fair, you and Oliver Schmidt, I mean, just an incredible performance from both of you guys. In terms of a card that, 
you know, from the top to the bottom, from the prelims to the main fights and how incredible they look. For both of you guys to stand out the way you did on such an incredible card with the performances, I mean, that's really saying something in terms of where you're at at this point in your career. Just, you know, so fresh face, so young, and like having that kind of performance to, uh, to make your professional debut. Absolutely unbelievable, man. We can't wait to see what comes next for you. And in terms of that, I know Blake spoke to you in the cage about, you know, when you'd sort of more like to come back, but you've had a couple of sort of days to think about. I'm sure there's no matches sort of being made right now, but do you have any sort of thing in mind about, you know, potentially when you might like to come back, anyone you'd like to sort of see in the cage next in a perfect world, what do you see next for yourself? Um, yeah, so I'm going to August, uh, Thailand in August and um, I'd like to sneak on in between now and then. Um, in terms of opponents, I think, well, Eternal's going to offer, offer us what they offer us, but um, there was a name that I had in mind because it was the initial offer for this card, which was Taser Malone, and I think that's a fight that makes sense. We're both 1-0, and um, and if he wants to take that fight, I'd be happy to... Uh, welcoming and um, yeah so if that's uh, what they offer us that's what they offer us but if not I'm open to other options as well no, Taser Malone another fan favourite and I think after that performance man you're another fan favourite yourself so bring on that fight I say I'm sure the fans would love to sort of get on board for that one so whenever that might happen uh, I'm sure we'll, we, we, uh, we'd love to see that happen are we heading to Thailand for a holiday or get a bit of training in? No I'm going to do a bit of training over there so I went last year and um, I had an injury at the time and I just kept walking past seeing gyms and I was like, man, I wish I could train. So I, I knew I had to head back over and do some training. So I'm really looking forward to that. No, I'm sure you get some good training over there, man. A lot of the good guys, you know, guys like Jimmy Creek, guys out of, uh, you know, a lot of the gyms around Australia certainly heading over there to get some training. And so I'm sure you enjoy it. Hey, man, thank you so much for your time on the show today. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you. Like I said, you were the only, only guy that was going to be on the show today for the one guest we could sort of fit in. Um, can't wait to see what comes next for you. Um, enjoy going over to Thailand, and uh, I'm sure we'll speak again in the near future uh, when you come back and uh, get that second fight in. Awesome. Appreciate you having me on, Luke. Um, yeah, it was good to chat. You're the man, Harry. Thank you.